السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his followers until the day of qiyamah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all truly from amongst those who are following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam honored ulama beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having blessed us with beautiful seasons within the year one of those seasons happens to be this month of ramadan a season of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are multiplied during this month and we need to seize the opportunity to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month with the idea that after this month we would be much closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every year if we make this a habit then inshallah in a few years time we will achieve excellence and we will be very happy with our own development it will result in inner peace contentment and much more may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us two verses which we read in last night's tarawih which i'd like to interpret before moving on to tonight's verses that were read the first verse is connected to the fact that the spoils of war when it comes to the battlefield and the islamic rules governing the spoils of war that are taken from the enemy or what is known as the booty there are rules that govern the distribution of this particular booty it is not according to my desire or yours or it is not according to the desire of the commander of the army no it is according to allah's desire and wish and he says in the opening verses of the 10th juz and the 10th para the 10th chapter of the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَأَنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ وَلِلرَّسُولِ وَلِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَلِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ You should know that when it comes to the booty and the spoils of war Definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him belongs 20% of it automatically and immediately and to the messenger of Allah and to the poor and the needy and so on. So from this we understand that unlike the laws that govern the various armies of today in Islam whatever is found and whatever is taken from the enemy it does not necessarily become the property of the one who has taken it. no is it allowed to be usurped unjustly and incorrectly but everything must be channeled through the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 20% shall go immediately to a certain direction and the other 20s will be distributed according to the command and wish of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding another verse connected to last night's recitation as well is regarding the commandership of the muslim army at any given time and the fact that the soldiers of a muslim army should bear in mind that the one who is right at the top always shall issue instruction according to the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ultimately no one will be allowed to transgress the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah says if we are united and if we are solid as one unit and we move forth without creating splits and cracks within ourselves then definitely we shall win and for this reason allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa ati'u allah wa rasulahu wa la tanaza'u fatafshalu wa tadhhab rihukum follow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and do not dispute with one another because if you do that the quran continues to say you will be unsuccessful and you will lose all your power the minute you begin to argue with one another and debate with one another in an in a manner that is not constructive at all 
then obviously it will only result in hatred. And if the members of the ummah hate one another, what goodness do we expect to come out of that collective ummah, which has just forged a unity, but in essence there, is, there are cracks, deep cracks within the center. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us unity. And for this reason, in Islam we are taught something very very simple and straightforward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالزُّبُرُ Always ask those who know. Those who have knowledge of the revelation, always ask them when you do not know. And to follow it through, accept the answer. Sometimes we might not understand what we are told. But we should realize the authority of the person we've asked. Why did we ask that person if we did not accept their view? At times we have what is known as fatwa shopping. I know there are many malls and mashallah in South Africa there are plenty malls. And alhamdulillah there are plenty muftis as well. But sometimes people have a bad habit of what is known as fatwa shopping. They would go to one place and ask a mufti a question regarding divorce. When he says it is all complete... And there is no hope, no way forward. They would then say, no, that was too expensive, let's go and look somewhere else. And they go shopping elsewhere. Until they find the price that suits their pocket. This is unacceptable in Islam. This is tatabbu' ar-rukhas, which means following that which is easy for oneself. And this is what is unacceptable. Let us sit, decide. If we really would like to ask such and such a person, go and ask them whatever they say, you should understand it is final. Unless obviously it totally contradicts the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which case I am sure none would have even gone to ask such a person in the first place. So today, if we have not understood something, rather accept the ruling and then try to understand it. That is what is important. Accept the ruling and try to understand it, rather than disregarding it, not accepting it, and creating a war within oneself. No contentment shall be found for such a person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Allah has explained that follow him and follow his messenger, and do not dispute with one another, because you shall be unsuccessful and you lose all your might, and all your power shall be lost. Today the ummah, the largest, according to my own view, the largest following of any religion, the following of Islam, and the Muslims are the largest in number, larger than any Christians can compete with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. But the reason why we do not feel the power of the Muslims, we exist in small pockets throughout the globe, and that's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true strength. Amen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of spending in his path. And we know this is the month of Ramadan, and we know that we should be spending. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of some of the qualities of the Bedouins. Two categories of Bedouins. Those who were miserly, those who were stingy on one hand, and on the other hand, those who loved to spend. When we have to work out our own zakat, we should ask ourselves, are we miserly? Do we really try and win in figures for ourselves or are we trying to give out as much as possible if there is something doubtful for example are we from amongst those who would rather have that for ourselves or give it away in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is a question there is a lot of Islamic activity mashallah and a lot of it is very very thirsty for our wealth if you take a look at other religions for example they would happily give away 10% of their salary without a batting of an eyelid. And really and truly, they would progress because every single one of them is dedicated towards that contribution. Yes, in Islam, it is left to our iman. If a person ducks and dives and cheats when it comes to zakat, none besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with such a person. No one can come and roll up their sleeves and say, right, pay your zakat. No, it doesn't happen like that in Islam. No imam or alim can chase you out of the masjid because you haven't paid your zakat, most probably nobody would know. So this is the difference. We, out of our love for Allah, should give it out. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
He is the one who accepts tawbah and he is the one who accepts these charities directly. If we give it out, we are doing ourselves a favor. We are not doing anyone else a favor. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the Bedouins. وَمِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مَا يُنْفِقُ مَغْرَمًا وَيَتَرَبَّصُ بِكُمُ الدَّوَائِرِ There are some Bedouins whom they regard as they regard as a, a debt that they are giving. They regard as something very burdenful that they are giving you when it comes to giving out charities. And giving out their zakah. They regard it as a huge burden. And they are giving it out. And they are hoping that something bad befalls you. So that they can stop giving in the future. One category. The other category Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes one verse later. وَمِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَيَتَّخِذُ مَا يُنْفِقُ قُرُبَاتٍ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ There are some of the Bedouins. Who believe in Allah and the last day. And that belief in Allah and the last day leads them to spending in the path of Allah and considering it an act of worship, an act of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the chance and the opportunity to spend our wealth whilst we are still alive in the right cause. Today, it is amazing. If we look around us, what do we find? We find not only extravagance. Extravagance is not the word. We find expense upon expense extremely unnecessary just to boast and brag. If we take a look at a lot of the weddings that are going on today, are we not guilty, let's be honest, of boasting, of showing off, and 90% of the time that type of a marriage would suffer turbulence within the first year. Because there is no barakah. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ النِّكَاحِ بَرَكَةِ أَيْسَرُهَا مَأُونَةِ Definitely, that nikah which has the greatest barakah is the one which was the simplest, the least amount of expense. If you'd like to feed, feed but not to boast. Possibly, pick up a group of poor people, feed them. Call a group of friends, 10, 20, 50. Do you know that at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he once invited his companions to a walima. What did he say? He said, look, inshallah we will be eating together. Each one of you bring a plate of food and we shall put it together and eat. Imagine, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most beloved. And obviously that is why there was so much barakah in the marriages at the time. Today, unfortunately, it's become a show. Why do we have to mention this? It is the month of Ramadan. We need to ask ourselves, Strictly, I've got so much wealth. How much have I spent in the path of Allah? How much have I spent such that I can get up tomorrow and face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happily, proudly, and say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really and truly has granted me the opportunity of spending in His path. But unfortunately, sometimes we spend it just to show people I've had a 10 course meal, a 15 course meal. That needs to stop. And if it has happened in the past, we should engage in tawbah and istighfar. And inshallah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us conscientize ourselves and everyone else to say, this is not how it should be. I've got a daughter. My worry is not how many people I feed at her marriage. My worry is, will she be happy or not in her future? And what will happen to her offspring? What type of an example am I setting? What if tomorrow we don't have the wealth? You will have others who go out and borrow bank loans in order to throw parties that are unacceptable. Where then can we expect happiness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who love to be told the truth. Remember when we are told as it is, we should really smile and we should be happy. Even if we are, we are guilty of it. Remember, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who makes people utter words. And we should not feel that such and such a person is attacking us. Such and such a person is blasting us. No, that is incorrect. If that is our attitude, then we join the ranks of those who were not interested in the message when it came to them. Rather, we be from amongst those who say, yes, we have erred in the past. And it is time to change our ways. Because the Muslim ummah is bleeding. We can see where it is bleeding. And we are guilty of placing bandages where it was not yet bleeding. And leaving those who are bleeding 
to bleed until the point of death. I hope we've understood what I'm trying to say. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all acceptance and may He accept our wealth in the right direction and not in the wrong path. Ameen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the goodness that man likes. And man always makes dua. In fact, Surah Yunus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the various prayers of man and how hypocritical man is. When goodness befalls man, he forgets Allah. And when evil affects man or something bad overcomes a person, suddenly you find that person calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how man loves goodness to come so quickly. That Allah says, if I were to let the bad that a person deserves, not just bad as in punishment that one does not deserve, no, but bad that a person deserves, if I were to let it come to that person as quickly as that person would like goodness to come towards him, then by now, the time, the fixed time of expiry of that particular person would have come. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is the verse, وَلَوْ يُعَجِّلُ اللَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ الشَّرُّ وَاسْتِعْجَالَهُمْ بِالْخَيْرِ لَقُضِيَ إِلَيْهِمْ أَجَلُهُمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to bring forth as quick as possible the evil towards man in the same way that man loves, or in the same speed that man loves goodness to come towards him, then the time would have come. Punishment would have overtaken every single one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. From this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing our attention to turning to Him and asking Him even at times of ease. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing our attention to. Sometimes we are guilty of only asking Allah at times of difficulty. We need to change that. When we are sitting with everything on the plate, and alhamdulillah, we have absolutely nothing to complain about. Then we need to be found in the masjid. Then we need to be found more making dua to Allah, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking protection, because that is a person who is truly grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the very next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ الضُّرُّ دَعَانَا لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ ضُرَّهُ مَرَّ كَأَنْ لَمْ يَدْعُنَا إِلَى ضُرٍ مَسَّهُ When evil affects man, we find him calling out to us, whilst lying down, whilst sitting, and whilst standing. And then, when goodness befalls the person, and when that evil is taken away, man continues as though he'd never called out to us, and as though it probably was his own intellect that got him out of the problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all steadfast and strong. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of good company. And I'm sure we all understand the importance of good company. All you need to do, or all I need to do, or all anyone needs to do, is just watch. See a few examples around you. And that's it. We will learn. Sometimes when a person is young, they have not seen examples. But as you grow older, you just need to watch. See people. Look at their inclinations. And see who their friends are. Most probably their friends have the same inclinations. Even good people sometimes when they are in the company of those who are bad and evil, they become evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in this regard. And He says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'as-sadiqeen. O you who believe, be conscious of your Creator. And always, be, fi always find yourself in the company of those who are truthful. Always be in the company of those who are upright and truthful. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those whom when others are in our company, they can benefit rather than us sliding into the bad habits that, that others may have. Sometimes a person may have a job. If that job takes you to a place that is haram and unacceptable, 
it is your duty to change that job. Because very soon, if you are visiting, for example, with the excuse of work, nightclubs and so on, that is totally prohibited. Very soon, that whirlpool will suck you in, in a manner that nobody will ever be able to pull you out. And anyone who tries to pull you out will probably dive straight in behind you or will earn your wrath. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard all of us. It is important. Some people lose track and they begin to say, well, this is work. Not realizing that that is what company is all about as well. And when we go out to work, even the environment within the workplace, make sure it is compatible to Islam. And make sure it conforms to the Islamic teachings. Because if we are in an environment whereby we find haram, we find ourselves intermingling, and we find ourselves in constant contact with that which is haram, there is a great chance that shaitan may beautify that haram one day, and we might find ourselves really and truly from amongst those who will regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the day of qiyamah. And he says on that day, when everyone will be resurrected, it will seem as though just an hour has passed. Life will, will have seemed to everyone so short. Today if I am to ask myself, or anyone who is here, anyone listening, to summarize their entire lives, I am sure most of us, within a few hours at least, or an hour, we'd be able to mention the highlights in our life. And to us, it seems like a few days. To everyone, it seems like just a few days. We know in our knowledge that it is years, many years at times. But... We do not realize that sometimes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, On the day of Qiyamah, life which everyone had spent on earth will seem so insignificant that everyone will look at each other and they will recognize each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they will recognize each other. And it will have seemed so insignificant, it was not worth all the transgression in this earth. It is very, very short-lived. And in order to understand this, we need to look at those who have passed away. Look at those on their deathbed right now as we speak. Look at how helpless they are. And think to yourself, what sin have I committed? One day I might be on my deathbed just like this. Then, won't it be too late for me to think to myself, why did I waste my time in the past? So I'd rather change now. None of us can guarantee that we are going to have a death after prolonged sickness, which is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because it gives people the opportunity to turn to Allah. But we might die in a car crash. We might die suddenly, heart attack. We might die being shot. Then we wouldn't have had time to repent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us repentance in the season of repentance. Every evening he calls out, who is there seeking forgiveness that I can forgive? How many of us have actually answered the question of our own creator to say, yes, I am seeking forgiveness. Forgive me, Ya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention thereafter of the fact that this Quran and the verses in the Quran are all cure. Cure of every type of sickness. Cure first and foremost of the spiritual sicknesses that man goes through. Cure thereafter even of the physical ailments. And cure thereafter of all forms of superstitious problems that people go through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha nasu qad jaatkum maw'idhatum min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur. O people, from your Rabb unto you has come a message, a warning, and that which cures the hearts. First and foremost, spiritual cure. All the verses of the Quran are so powerful, we need to read them in a melodious voice and understand them. And put them into practice and learn more and more about the Quran. People who follow other religions are guilty of not knowing their own book. They are guilty of not knowing their own book. Many of them don't even know 
more than a few verses of the book. Are we the same? Do we have the same guilt? Or are we guilty of the same? If so, we need to change that. Let us all spend time a day, every single day, set aside time in order to learn the Qur'an, how to recite it, to understand it. Let us set aside a time, no matter how old we are, to learn even a few words of the Arabic language, because that is a blessed language. And believe me, when we read the Qur'an, knowing the Arabic language, the taste of it is really and truly something else. One would not want to even stop reading the words because they are so powerful. Imagine if enemies of Islam like Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu prior to his acceptance of Islam could just hear a few words and those words shook them and really made them cry and turned them forever and ever. Why then ourselves as Muslims we read Quran after Quran and it hasn't even tickled us. We read verse after verse, surah after surah, 114 surahs, complete, one, one Qur'an a month, and it hasn't tickled us. Our spirituality hasn't moved. There is something wrong. When Umar ibn al-Khattab and the likes read one verse, two verses, five verses, and their whole lives changed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us strong. And may He make us from amongst those whom, in the same way, we went to varsity, and in the same way, we went to school, spending hours every day, eight hours a day, six hours, ten hours a day, trying to learn a few books which will help us earn a few rands for another twenty years of our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us and accept us to give even more importance to His book that will take us beyond this entire life and into the akhirah forever and ever. How many hours are we prepared to give for that cause? And it is not impossible for us to make our minds here and now today to say, I'm going to give an hour a day in order to learn the Qur'an. And then again, as I said, and I've explained it in the past, it is very dangerous for a person single-handedly to try and extract rulings from the Qur'an. It is incorrect. The rules and regulations of the Qur'an, we need to consult the ulama, learn under the tutorship of able ulama in order to comprehend the rules and regulations of the Qur'an. But... The other verses of the Qur'an connected to stories of the past and connected to historic facts and so on and the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put forth in this creation. Those are easy for everyone to understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really and truly make us from amongst those who can learn the Qur'an and who can understand it. And may He make us from amongst those whom the Qur'an affects and has a great impact upon immediately. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrect us with those who have mastered the Qur'an, because we have heard that those who have mastered the Qur'an will be resurrected with the Anbiya and the Prophets. So may Allah resurrect us with them as well. Ameen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention thereafter of those who have believed, those who have accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if He willed, all mankind would have accepted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also, anyone who sees the light, it is through the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this reason, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked us to make a dua. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. O oh Allah, the one in whose hands are the hearts, the one who turns the hearts, keep our heart steadfast on this deen. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hidayah and guidance. Because... Even though we might be as in intelligent as we are, sometimes if guidance is not written for someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whomsoever Allah has decided to keep in this guidance, none shall be able to help that person. No one at all. Nobody. And whomsoever Allah has decided to guide, None shall be able to misguide that person. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guidance. In one hadith, which is a hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, kullukum dallun illa man hadaituhu fastahduni ahdikum. O my worshippers, all of you are astray besides the one whom I have guided. So ask me for guidance. Seek guidance from me and I shall guide you. Subhanallah. The hadith continues to say, Ya ibadi, kullukum ja'i'un illa man at'amtuhu fastat'imuni ut'imkum. O oh my worshippers, all of you are hungry. 
besides those whom I have fed. So seek sustenance and food from me and I shall feed you. The hadith continues to say, Ya ibadi, kullukum arin, illa man kasawtuhu fastaksuni aksikum. O my worshippers, all of you are naked besides the one whom I have decided to clothe. So ask me to clothe you and I shall cover you. Cover you meaning not only the clothes we see on ourselves today here, but covering even our weaknesses. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who beautifies that or who leaves apparent that which is beautiful and He covers up that which is ugly. Our habits, our secrets, everything, Allah has covered it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all on the right path. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance. I end with one verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَكُمُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ اِهْتَدَى فَإِنَّمَا يَهْتَدِي لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ ضَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يَضِلُّ عَلَيْهَا O you who believe, indeed the truth has come to you from your Lord. Whoever would like to take it, has definitely taken it and it will be of benefit for himself, none other than himself. And whoever has decided to leave it after the guidance has come to that person, they decide to forsake it and to leave it and to throw it away, it will only be harmful and detrimental against that particular person. From this, we understand that the message of deen will always come to us and it is up to us to take it. Because if we take it, it will benefit us. If we don't, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question us and it will be to our detriment that we reject the word of truth when it comes to us. May Allah make us from amongst those who can surrender to the truth at all times. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.